Hi there, this is Perry again. Uh, tonight I'm working on a project to remachine these Gibbs to fit my Fidal. These are brand new Gibbs, I bought them as replacement parts, but the taper on the Gib is not the same as what's on my machine. My machine's an older machine and it appears at some point Fidal changed that taper. And I found out that my table is 1.203 degrees. That's about as close as I can measure because that's four decimal places. This is the number that we have to hit. I'm rounding it to 1.2 degrees because I'm sorry, but out to the thousandths of a degree isn't going to matter. This stuff is pretty squishy, relatively speaking. So I've got a set of gauge blocks set up in the bridge port already uh, to do this. I've got a 2047 stack and I've got uh, a 0.1 stack. Now, before I can get to the fun part of actually cutting the taper on this, I have a little homework, a little housework on this. See, these were belt sanded and they're not square. And that causes me problems because I can't clamp them because they rock one way or the other. And I don't want them rocking, so I'm going to have to clamp these up. I'm going to clamp them up like this. Take advantage of repeatability, as it were. I don't think these are too repeatable, but anyway. Um, clamp them up like this in the vise, so that way I've got parallel surfaces. And then I'm going to take a skim cut on the top, flip them over, take a skim cut on the bottom, and in theory they should then be parallel and I can stick them in the vise on the sign bar like this. And I can take my cut. Now I do have to measure this little step right here so I can replicate it. It doesn't look like it's uh, super critical of a dimension, but it's something that I want to uh, take care of. I want to replicate that. It's basically, it narrows the bearing pad of the gib so that whenever it's uh, adjusted in and out, there's just this small bearing surface. And it also probably allows for just a smidge of misalignment. Um, but anyway, next step, square up the edges, then I can clamp it on the sign bar. And uh, I'm not going to show squaring it up, that's boring. I'll show it clamped up in the sign bar, I'll take a couple cuts, and then I'll show you the finished parts. Okay, so I'm doing a little freehanding here so you can see what I'm working on. I have the gibbs in there, I've squared uh, up the edges, so the face is square to the sides, the sides are parallel, they're clamped in there. I have the sign bar underneath here, I've got a quarter inch thick piece of ground stock that is clamping the gibbs to the fixed jaw because the gibbs are slightly narrower than the sign bar, so this sits up off the top of the sign bar. and then. Right here, I've got a stop that is uh, wedged up against the sign bar, and then I've tightened the vise down, I've beat the, the gibbs down onto uh, the sign bar. So uh, I have a cutter in here right now. If you look at this insert real closely, that's the same insert that the Tormach Superfly uses. This is a Sandvik cutter. It's an R290, uh, R, no, RA245, and uh, it's a, a high shear, like 2.3 or 2.5 inch uh, cutter, and it's got five inserts. And it's designed uh, primarily for low horsepower machines like a Bridgeport, and it works real well. So I'm going to use that like a fly cutter and I'm going to uh, bring this surface down uh, to the approximate thickness that I need. I will show you once I've cleaned this up, I'm not going to machine or uh, show the whole machining process right here. Once I switch to an end mill to do these little steps right here, which are, I think they're supposed to be nominally 10 thousandths, but they measured about 11. So I'll, uh, I'll show you once I'm done with the, uh, the fly work here. Okay, so I finished milling the uh, the thickness. Um, I was just barely touching off on the big end right here. 
and if you look at it it's hard to see in this angle but uh, this wide flat shiny spot that's all the material I took down to change the angle of that gib now once I set this up on the sign bar I stuck an indicator on the spindle and then I swept a distance of 4.501 inches with the tip of the indicator after I zeroed it then I measured the difference in in uh, height at 4.501 it was 17 thousandths I went back to the whiteboard looked at my numbers uh, I subtracted the uh, the 0.95 which was 0757 uh, from 0.0945 and I got 17.9 thousandths or something like that basically I would just confirm that once I actually had it clamped in here that the angle was what I intended it to be now I've got an 8 flute half inch end mill in here and I'm gonna do these uh, these ribs right here so I won't machine that part because you know it's just more of the same I'll show you the finished result though uh, once I'm done machining it I'm gonna have to uh, touch it up with just uh, you know some a stone just to kinda clean it up and deburr it because these steps are only gonna be ten thousandths and they'll create burrs so anyway uh, I'll show you once the next step is complete well this is the finished product if I uh, turn off this light it reduces the ambient light here, or, or excuse me, we are now looking at it under ambient light. Uh, there's still a bunch of burrs on this, I need to uh, deburr it, but you can see there's the finished gibbs. Okay. Next, we have to deburr them, and then we will inspect them and try them on the machine. Okay, so I've finished uh, deburring the gibbs, and I stoned the, uh, the bearing surface right here, this raised part, and I just finished inspecting one of the gibbs. I've got my 4-inch uh, gauge block and then the .501 gauge block and that's the thick and the little so that's 999.2 thousandths and 904.4 thousandths well when you do the trig this is what you get 1.20685 that my friends is within three ten thousand or excuse me three thousandths of a degree of what the table is that's a win buddy